Hi, my name is Tyler Mowry, and welcome to the Writer's Mind Podcast, episode 64. All right, welcome to another episode of the Writer's Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for subscribing to the Patreon. Your support does mean a lot to me. Today, what I want to talk about is something that I was thinking about recently, uh, thinking about different cultures and societies across history. And one of the things I was noticing is how there are so many cultures, uh, especially in, in ancient history, that had slaves of some kind, right? They would conquer a nation and then enslave the people and then have those people build buildings or, you know, increase the empire in some way. Egypt did this. Rome did this. I believe Greece did as well. Um, All sorts of, those are just sort of off the top of my head, but all sorts of civilizations across the world had slaves of different kinds. Um, And then, you know, the most notable, obviously, is the more recent ones like America and American slavery back in the um, in the 16, 1700s, 1800s, uh, uh, that, that sort of time period. Um, and so one of the things I was really thinking about is that civilizations that had slaves, right, uh, specifically more, an- more of these ancient civilizations, not, not some of the more recent ones. Those are kind of a different topic, but specifically some of these older ones, you know, Egypt, these sorts of, uh, you know, Babylon, these older kingdoms, right? I don't, it doesn't seem like they thought they were evil. They were just, they had slaves and they were building things. And that was what societies did. And it doesn't really seem that certain kingdoms looked down upon other kingdoms because they had slaves. Maybe they did. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But generally, it really seems that so many different kingdoms uh, and civilizations had slaves and they were using them to build buildings and you know there was a varying degree of cruelty and all of that um, but it was definitely part of the culture or part of multiple cultures back in ancient times and so one of the things that is interesting is that today we talk about you know there mostly isn't slavery anymore you know we don't really do that but we sort of do, right? So we have slavery today, at least in my view, but the, what has changed is our particular perception of it and how it operates. So in the past, you know, a slave uh, would get a home. You, you can even see this with sort of kingdoms in uh, uh, medieval times in medieval Europe with serfs uh, and the Lord and this sort of thing. They had a home and they worked and they had food, but they didn't really get pay outside of that. And they were kind of locked into this job that was you know, their slave job. Uh, similarly today, what we do instead is we give people money instead of directly giving them or, you know, we as in our society gives uh, workers money rather than food and a place to stay specifically. And then those workers can then go buy their food and then pay rent or pay their mortgage or whatever. And because we have this middleman of money, we assume that slavery does not exist anymore. But what you see is that it does. Like, you know, the, the the phones that you're carrying, the computers that we use, many of these, th- some of the clothes that we wear, many of these things are created by people that are working in poor conditions and are being paid very little, uh, very much hate their situations and cannot get out of it. And then this is what allows us to build iPhones and technology and clothes and all of these sorts of things but you know of course this is something that we don't like to think about because we don't want to perceive ourselves as evil so what happens is we continue to perceive slavery as objectively immoral unethical and evil but then what we do is we think that oh well because these things are done by people that are literally countries away from us. It's okay, or we don't have to think about it, or it's not our responsibility. It's somebody else's responsibility. And then, of course, you know, you have some people that try to live 
consistently or try to live in line with the idea that slavery is evil um, and go very far to, you know, not buy certain technology, not buy clothing from overseas, um, not buy all sorts of different items from these overseas places. Um, and that is good, right? These people are living according to their, um, their, their ethical worldview. And as we all should, and, you know, of course we can have a, we, we can, we can have an ethical discussion about sort of slavery and like whether or not it's okay to own an iPhone. If people are, are, are paid low wages to build some of the pieces of this. Um, but that's not necessarily what I'm trying to talk about today. What I'm trying to talk about today is that how human beings, right? What we do is we systemize things, right? We don't even, it doesn't even seem like we, we create religions or we, we don't even create, we don't create religions. We don't create businesses. We don't even create countries. Those things are side effects of the core thing that we seem to do, which is sort of systemize and build, right? We're curious. We like to build things. So we systemize and build and systemize and build and systemize and build. And we've been doing that for as long as we possibly can for as long as we've been able to harness power, as long as we've been able to, able to build tools, as long as we've been able to pass information down from generation to generation, we see human beings building systems, automating things, inventing things, being ever curious and growing and growing and growing. And so what happens is we then place people to work within these systems for better or for worse, usually for worse, and they become, you know, a cog in this overall system, right? So that is a system of business, or that's a system of a civilization, you know, building pyramids off the backs of slaves, um, or a business building, you know, iPhone screens off the backs of poorly paid workers, Um you know, all of it comes down to we like to systemize, we like to do things the most efficient, fastest way. And then it really seems like what we do is people have uh, debates and discussions about ethics and philosophy sort of behind that, right? So the things are happening, we are systemizing and growing and building things, and just that's what we're doing. And, um, you know, some people are thinking about the ethics of it, but largely people are just doing things. And then there are people that are coming behind and kind of saying like, Hey, what, not what can be done, but what should be done and how should we do things? Um, which are extremely valuable, important questions. Um, but it doesn't seem like they really get answered that much, right? It seems like no matter what people just sort of continue to build and push forward. And it doesn't matter that much what the other people that are actually trying to critique a system are saying. And so we all just kind of turn a blind eye and move forward. And so it's almost as if, you know, there, to me, there's really seems like this sort of core pull in human beings. You can even look at this with like AI, right? S- something that like, it could be such a massive leap in our understanding of how to build things, but at the same time could be extremely dangerous to us. We all sort of have this belief that it is inevitable. Why do we believe it's inevitable? Well, we believe it's inevitable because at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like anybody actually cares about the ethics of anything. And that at some point... If we can do it, somebody's going to. And it seems like we really just sort of accept that and we just sort of accept whatever's going to happen next. It's almost like um, when the Nazis and the Japanese were um, you know, beaten in World War II, uh, the Allied uh, governments went in and found that the Nazis and the Japanese were doing all sorts of of these experiments um, on human beings and all sorts of heinous experiments with all sorts of horrible human rights violations. And so the allied powers kind of come and they say, oh man, I cannot believe how uh, evil and horrible all this was. Uh, We will take all of this research though. That'll be super interesting to break down, right? Because ultimately they don't care. They just want to continue moving forward. They want to figure things out. 
they're happy that somebody else did the unethical dirty work so that they can come in and be like, oh, let me check out those research notes because that's really what we all care about and the whole ethics thing is kind of a facade. It's frustrating when you think about, you know, especially kind of in the in the mid-2000s, you really see kind of the atheist wave um, and the move away from any sort of structured religion. Um, and I'm not, you know, I, I think one of the things that is very clearly true is that when we leave behind structured religions, we find that it becomes way harder to objectively answer questions on why we should or shouldn't do things to other people or enslave them or these sorts of things, right? It allows for people to find the loopholes or push things farther away. Or there is no when there is no moral code that we all sort of agree upon as a society and we're all trying to feel it out and we're all saying, well, doesn't this feel right objectively for all of us? Sometimes that's the case and sometimes people will disagree with you and sometimes those people have the power to do very heinous things. And, you know, then we end up in, in a mess. It's, it really seems like, I think the point of this is, it really seems to me that we automate and systemize things first. And we are worried about breakthroughs and experiments and figuring out the next interesting thing or the next thing we can do and build. And then we worry about the morality and ethics of a certain thing way later. Um, I think it was... Uh, uh, I think it was in China um, where they were working on... Okay, here we go. Um, this is uh, this is the scientist.com. Um, it says, first human monkey chimeras developed in China. This is August 5th, 2019. An international team of researchers has created embryos containing both human and monkey cells, right? So they're trying to combine uh, human and monkey embryos to see what happens. Um, let's see. Um, and so, you know, the, these sorts of these sorts of things are, are kind of crazy. And then you hear something like scientists are putting human cells and monkey cells together to see what happens, and it makes you say, "Oh wow!" Like that's what a wild thing that these people are doing. And then it probably makes you ask, is that okay? Should that be okay? And then right after that, you probably have that inkling in the back of your head. That's like, does it matter what you think? Because ultimately somebody is going to be doing it, right? It's not going to be you, but somebody is. Somebody already is doing it. Somebody has funding. There's a whole system set up for these sorts of things to go on. So it re- this is really what happens is that like the general public gets to sit around and ask about the ethics, ethics of things. But really, we are just doing the next thing. We're systemizing, we're growing, we're building. And the ethics of what is going on always seems to take a back seat. So when you look at it like that, it becomes a lot easier to say... Or it becomes a lot easier, I guess, to understand why so many societies and civilizations were using slaves and openly without trying to make any sort of moral, um, you know, moral case for it. They were just sort of saying, "Yeah, I guess we're all, all of us here in Mesopotamia are all using slaves. All of us here in, uh, you know, Asia, kind of just enslaving people." all of us in Europe, all, you know, all over the place. And I think it, more than we realize, I think that gives us a lens into how people really operate and how that it really doesn't seem like we care what the ethics of, of things are, even on a, on a societal level. And it's funny that people can't refute this idea now Because why? Because we are still operating on this idea. We're operating in a world where we're using the tools built by people that are essentially slaves. We are wearing things or, you know, all these sorts of things. There's so many elements of our lives that you really could link and say, okay, look at this thing. 
and this is clearly linked to some some form of slavery or animal cruelty um, or whatever you wanted to label it. And so I think there's more serious ramifications for that idea than we think about. And again, this is what this podcast is about. It's trying to make you, I'm not trying to tell you to throw away your iPhone or, you know, say that humanity is destined to not care about one another. But I want you to think about what I'm saying and see if it sends you down your own rabbit trail, right? Isn't it crazy how and we also we always like to take our we like to sit on our high horse a lot and say oh wow i can't believe that that society back then did this but we are good and different it's like they thought they were good and different and i'm sure there were societies behind them that they were like wow i can't believe those people over there were doing that that's so crazy but we are the good guys everybody thinks they're the good guys and then people come along behind them and philosophize whether or not they were actually the good guys. And then it just becomes whose story holds up about whether or not you were the good guys or the bad guys. So where does that leave people? I think it le- I think it really polarizes human beings, right? I think, I think it seems to show that our, whether or not, you know, objective morality is 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 out there it does seem to show that human beings care more about moving forward than they do about some of the elements of of morality that we would uh, verbally hold valuable you know like human rights and the va- the individual value of one person um, and uh, individual equality so I hope this is kind of making sense or helping you think, uh, but I was really, I was really just thinking about this more so because, you know, everybody thinks they're the good guy. People don't believe that they are doing, most people believe that they are doing things for the greater good or for the good, or they rationalize their actions and say, because I'm doing things for me and for my people, this is for the greater good because the greater good is the whatever their ethical worldview is at the time the greater good is the you know continuation and expansion of my particular people group um or whatever and so everybody is walking around with these with these ideas um and it seems like you, when you really look at what people do versus what people what people as a whole do versus what people as a whole say, it seems like the what we care about is moving forward and building and growing and not the ethics of the things that we do. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe that's a very pessimistic way of looking at things. Uh, I'm not saying I fully hold to this idea. I was just thinking about it more so recently and thought I would share it with you all. And, um, if you're, uh, if you want to talk about this more in the discord, uh, shoot me a message in the discord. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys next week.